Let's begin by taking a look at the trigger points that refer pain to the wrist and hand region. First in yellow, we have the pectoralis major trigger points, which refer pain to the medial elbow and forearm and into the middle ring and pinky fingers on the palmar side. Next in turquoise, we have the pectoralis minor trigger points, which refer almost an identical pain pattern to the pectoralis major trigger points. Next in orange, we have the scalene trigger points. These refer a lateral upper arm pain, forearm and thumb pain, and on the pain on the posterior aspect of the index finger. Next in lime green, we have the brachialis trigger points, which refer pain to the base of the thumb on both sides. And now in dark green, we have the brachioradialis trigger points, which refer pain to the lateral elbow and to the web of the thumb on the posterior side. And in red, we'll take a look at the wrist extensors, starting with the extensor carpi ulnaris muscle, which refers pain to the posterior aspect of the wrist on the pinky side. And next, we'll take a look at the extensor carpi radialis longus muscle, which refers pain to the lateral elbow and the posterior aspect of the wrist, but on the thumb side. And lastly, of our wrist extensors, we have the extensor carpi radialis brevis muscle, which refers pain to the posterior wrist near the center or the midline. Now in blue, we'll take a look at the wrist flexors, starting with the flexor carpi radialis trigger point. This one refers pain to the anterior aspect of the wrist on the thumb side. And next we have the flexor carpi ulnaris trigger point, again referring to the anterior aspect of the wrist, this one on the pinky side. And lastly, in pink, we have the pronator teres trigger point, which refers pain to the anterior aspect of the wrist and the forearm on the thumb side. The clinical findings for the pectoralis major muscle are as follows. Clients will complain of chest pain, anterior shoulder pain, pain down the ulnar aspect of the forearm and into the fourth and fifth fingers, breast tenderness or nipple hypersensitivity. If the pain is on the left side of the chest and arm, it can easily be confused with cardiac pain. A lot of times when your client complains of chest pain, they will also complain of pain between the shoulder blades. Some activating and perpetuating factors for pectoralis major trigger points include the head forward rounded shoulder posture, heavy lifting with the arms out in front of the body, use of hedge clippers, immobilization of the arm, chilling of the pec major muscle, high levels of anxiety, and possibly pain from a previous heart attack. Here are some associated symptoms for pectoralis minor trigger points. Your clients will complain of pain in the anterior shoulder and chest regions. A tight pec minor muscle can also cause neurovascular entrapment in the armpit region and this can cause pain, numbness, tingling, and edema or swelling along the inside of the arm, forearm, and into the hand. Trigger point activating and perpetuating factors for the pec minor include car accidents, impact trauma directly to the chest, use of crutches, severe coughing, high levels of anxiety, carrying a heavy bag with a strap over the shoulder, and the head forward rounded shoulder posture.
Symptoms associated with trigger points in the scalene muscles include persistent aching chest pain in a two-finger-like pattern, pain between the shoulder blades that concentrates in the area just medial to the superior angle of the scapula, superficial anterior shoulder pain, pain on the anterior and posterior part of the upper arm that often disturbs their sleep, pain on the radial side of the forearm that skips the elbow and travels down the thumb into the index finger, numbness and tingling in the arm, hand, and the thumb, edema or puffiness in the hand, especially in the morning, Clients with active trigger points in the scalenes typically do not have restriction in the neck motion as they would with active trigger points in the levator scapula muscle. Some factors that may activate or perpetuate trigger points in the scalene muscles include automobile accidents, strong pulling movements such as playing tug of war, swimming, carrying heavy objects, coughing, scoliosis or lower limb length inequality, and limping because it causes a distortion in the client's posture. Here are the clinical findings for the brachialis trigger points. Clients with active brachialis trigger points will typically complain of pain at the base of the thumb on the posterior side, occasional pain and tenderness on the anterior elbow and shoulder area, and sometimes numbness and tingling in the thumb because of the entrapment of the superficial cutaneous branch of the radial nerve. Activating factors for the brachialis trigger points include holding power tools, carrying groceries, and playing tennis. Here are the clinical findings for brachioradialis trigger points. Clients make a plane of pain that starts at the lateral epicondyle and moves down to the wrist and to the base of the thumb. The therapist can actually confirm the presence of an active trigger point in the brachioradialis by tapping on the lateral epicondyle and eliciting pain and tenderness. Your client may also complain of pronounced weakness of the grip with objects frequently slipping out of their grasp. Some activating factors for brachioradialis trigger points include playing tennis, weeding with a trowel, prolonged frisbee throwing, ironing, and prolonged immobilization after a shoulder injury. Clinical findings for the wrist extensor trigger points. Clients may complain of pain on the back and outside of the wrist and occasionally near the lateral epicondyle. They will describe a pronounced weakness of the grip with objects frequently slipping from their grasp. Activating and perpetuating factors for trigger points in the wrist extensors include playing tennis, weeding with a trowel, prolonged frisbee throwing, ironing, extensive handshaking, and prolonged immobilization of the arm after a shoulder injury. Symptoms associated with trigger points in the wrist flexors include pain on the anterior aspect of the wrist, difficulty using scissors as opposed to forearm extensors involvement, and possible entrapment of the ulnar or median nerves, which causes numbness, tingling, and weakness in the hand and the wrist. Activating and perpetuating factors for trigger points in the wrist flexors include prolonged tight grip on something such as a steering wheel or a hammer, and pulling weeds.
Associated symptoms for trigger points in the pronator teres muscle include pain on the anterior and thumb side part of the wrist and forearm. And clients will also be unable to supinate a cupped hand as when there are coins placed into it. Some factors that may activate or perpetuate pronator teres trigger points include prolonged gripping of tools and a fracture of the wrist or forearm.